Hi, hi, this is Jesse Steigerwald, and I'm very delighted this morning to spend time with some people from Acton, Massachusetts, and we're going to be meeting a candidate for local office. Hello, good morning, Himaja. How are you? Nice to see you. Hi, it's really nice to see everyone, and thank you all so much for being here. Uh, my name is Himaja, and I'm currently running for the Acton Select Board. And joining us today also are two residents, two voters, importantly, from Acton. Um, good morning, Aliyah Lane. Nice to meet you. Hi. And also we have Margot Law. Hello. Good morning. Hi, so, how are you? You know, when I first heard that you were running, Himaja, and this is Himaja Nagaretti in Acton, when I first heard you were running, I was immediately intrigued. Right now, it seems like the moment in time when more people are stepping up to run for office at every level. And it cannot be understated how important it is to have people run up for local office. Yes, um, so I am a proud daughter of Indian immigrants. Um, my dad came from India um, to America um, 20 years ago, and we've lived here in Acton for the past 19 years. I am a proud, big sibling as well. I have a sister and a brother who are both younger than me. And growing up in Acton was a really interesting experience. Um, you know, it was a wonderful experience. Um, but at the same time, I was very conscious that um, there was a lack of representation in my school, in my community, and in the highest forms of our town government. Going to UConn, where I did my undergrad, um, going to Harvard, where I did my master's, um, and coming back to Acton uh, during the pandemic was, you know, uh, an experience that really taught me the importance of civic engagement and the importance of bringing needed voices to the table. And that's why I'm here today. It's really because I do believe that, you know, the time is right for more voices at the table. The time is right for issues that need to be heard to be heard. And I think that, you know, we're, we're ready for change. And so I'm so excited to be here in this space with you all. Really excited for our conversation. And thank you so much, Margo and um, Aliyah for being here today. We have uh, clearly voters who are stepping up and engaging with the campaign and, and knocking on doors or making phone calls, doing everything as safely as possible. So I'd love to hear what that's like. It's been a very, very surreal and interesting and amazing experience. And it's been a hard one. Um, I think that anytime you're trying to change the way things are run or even just bring voices that haven't been heard to the table, um, there is going to be resistance. But, you know, it's one of those things that you realize that you have to do to break those glass ceilings in order to keep making sure that we have the representation that we need. And we say representation all the time. And oftentimes we think of it as a buzzword, but it's really not. It's a way of thinking that really embraces the diversity of our town. Over one third of Acton are people under the age of 30. Over one third of Actonians are people who are people of color. And I think that when we don't have that representation, when we don't have those voices at the table, we're not addressing the needs and concerns of a large group of people inevitably. And that's the issue. So I think that this, this whole experience has been incredible because the support has been so heartwarming, um, but it's also been hard. And I think that the realistic, the the most important thing is to really make sure that, you know, I lean into the good things and just stay strong. There's going to be a lot of voices um, and I've heard them now and I'll probably hear them continue telling me to, you know, be a certain way or do a certain thing or change who I am. And I think if there's one thing I've learned through this experience is that I can't change who I am because the, this is the type of voice these are the type of voices that have been suppressed. And these are the type of voices that need to be there. And so that's something I'm trying to be really intentional about is not changing my voice. Aliyah and Margo, this is clearly resonating for you. I can see it in your, <laughs> in your energy that's coming forward as you listen. I'm, I'm wondering how this message at least seems like it's landed. I think one of the good things about Acton, I've been here for decades <laughs> uh, 
put three children through the school district, kindergarten through 12 and on to college. They're all in their 40s. Uh, and, um, and I've been involved in the town in many different ways, mostly um, theater. Uh, past president of Open Door Theater, and uh, I've directed a few shows at the high school, and um, you know, so been a part of this for quite some time. And what I like about this place is there's lots of community engagement here. Uh, people support our school. Uh, people come here for the schools, but people support the schools, the all the different programs. We have community supper. We have the household goods ministry really proud to have them in this neighborhood. Um, we support small businesses here, great restaurants. We have Nara Park. Uh, we have new playgrounds. We have the Arboretum. There's lots of, um, uh, lots of really wonderful things going on here. Um, and also it feels as if real dialogue, the type where people listen to each other and <laughs> go back and forth and, come to some common understanding it, about the hard subjects, that kind of dialogue feels as if it's slipping away. I, I mean, I think that's true in the rest of the country. I'm most concerned about how we bring us back together and go forward in on the difficult subjects, um, equity, diversity, inclusion. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to quote that that way, but you know, the the idea that we have seniors, we have youth, we have amazing youth. Uh, their voices are incredible. Um, we have folks struggling to get by. We have folks who are set for life here. Um, we all need to find some kind of common ground and a better way to, to manage that. I don't know, Alia, you've, you're a recent, uh, recent resident here. I'm wondering what your experience has been in that regard? Well, I've been here for about nine months now. Um, and it, it's been good, but it also like started off a bit rocky. Uh, when I first got here, like I have a dog, I love my dog. Um, I'm excited about the dog park idea in Acton. Um, when I first got here, I, I was out walking my dog and somebody pulled up next to us and said, do you live here? And I said, yes, I, I live right over there. And they drove off. And it was like such a startling moment. And it was such a, it was, it was a surprise. And since I've been here, that's happened about four times. Um, so it's like, I, I, I do want to say that there's been all these like wonderful people that have been very inviting um, with like in the community that have made me feel very welcome here. But like those moments are also, they're really awkward. Um, like, I don't know what to do. I, I, in some ways, I don't know how to, how to handle them. Um, like, and it's kind of faded away because like people around uh, where I live know that I'm here. I guess they're used to seeing me with my dog now, but like I get concerned, like what happens when my sister visits or my father visits or my brother's visit? Like, I don't, I'm not sure how to how to handle that or um, yeah how how to see that. But like I'm also very excited about things like you know the schools is is the big reason I came here. I have one that's about to start kindergarten next year, which is very exciting. Um, but it does it does worry me. Image, I'm wondering in terms of um, leadership at at the level of the select board. What do you see as the opportunity here to make some shifts? First of all, Ali, I'm so sorry that your experience in Acton has been this way. You know, Acton is, is a place we all call home, regardless of when we came here, um, regardless of why we came here. It's our home. It's a place where we're supposed to feel safe and warm and welcome. And the fact that that's been your experience in Acton means that we're doing something wrong um, as an entire town. And I think that that's something that we really need to think about. You know, we're, when we talk about equity, when we talk about justice, these are words that are attributed, are attributed to the basic human rights that every single one of us have. That's something that needs to be recognized on the select board as well. I think that we have made really meaningful change, for example, with um, the diversity, equity, and inclusion committee. We have really seen um, over this past year, a huge 
amazing effort of advocates trying to raise awareness of this issue that we haven't talked about for so long in this town. In terms of where we move forward from here, I think that making an increased commitment to not only just understanding the extent of racial inequity or um, racial injustice, but taking meaningful steps, making sure that we have, for example, reporting mechanisms that are available for people to report both macro and microaggressions. Um, and those reporting mechanisms are transparent um, and that we're, we're really being accountable for them, I think is really key. And that's something that, you know, the select board can help facilitate um, and, you know, has the ability to work with different committees, such as the school committee, to make sure that we're, we're integrating that in all aspects of our community. But that's just one way we can do it. And definitely the conversations need to further. Um, and I think another key thing is really engaging with different community organizations in this town. You know, when we talk about equity, we're talking about, you know, gender equity, we're talking about religious equity. And that requires hearing the voices of people in those communities. And so, you know, going to people in the community, you know, that are leading great efforts, um, that have a plug in the community, that have that built trust is really important because that's where we can get the information that we need to then make informed decisions on how we can better this town. Wow, that's amazing. Because I, I, one of the other things that I saw just within um, town leadership was they, they said that they, they weren't aware of any issues in action. Um, and I thought that was, that was a little bit disheartening. Although I did get um, the, a member of the DEIC did approach me um, and, and speak to me about some things, which is one of the things that you know, made me want, made me stay in Acton. You're so right about that. No, thank you for saying that because, you know, if we're not hearing about these issues, it means we're not talking to the right people. At the end of the day, that's the case. Um, and that means we need to make a greater effort at that outreach. Um, it's not enough to just sit on the sidelines. Um, the time is now to create that change. Well, and I think acting locally, talking about acting locally, uh, what, what we're seeing here doesn't feel any different than what's happening in the rest of the country. Uh, it's a microcosm of, of what's happening here, uh, of what's happening out there. And um, I feel as if we start to get a handle on how to talk to each other and how to keep lines of communication open and how to act together on these issues that that's how the whole the world begins to uh you know roll out of this this sinkhole that we're we seem to find ourselves in uh so starting that dialogue and and making sure that people are being heard everyone's being heard <laughs> listening in other words uh is really important to me uh, so i just find your uh your entry to this campaign um, incredibly rejuvenating. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you both so much. What are the best ways people can learn more if they want to also join and get involved? Um, the best way to get involved is um, to reach out. Um, all our information or contact information, more information about the platform, um, ways to volunteer, um, and even just how to vote. All of that is on the website. Um, so you can go to votehimaja.org and I'll spell it out. It's V-O-T-E-H-I-M, is it Mary? A-J-A dot org. Um, so we tried to keep it simple, um, but it's a really great place to go for more information. And along the lines of voting, please do vote. It really doesn't matter. It, it, at the end of the day, your vote is your power. Um, and regardless of who you vote for, you should vote. My parents got their citizenship when I was, I think, in fourth grade, um, might be third grade. Um, but for them, it was so important. And it was I, I, and they say it was the best moment of their lives and one of the best moments of their lives that they were able to become a citizen because that meant they were able to vote. Um, the ability to vote is a privilege. It is something that we should cherish because 
it's our way of directly impacting our lives. Um, and the lives of people that we care for. So I just encourage everyone to vote. Um, and if you have any questions about voting, um, please feel free to reach out whenever, um, because we really wanna make sure that you feel comfortable with voting and that you have all the information that you need to make the vote that you want. And when is election day? June 29th, that is the important day. That is the day to keep in mind. Um, mail-in ballots, um, uh, mail-in ballot applications are open now. Um, so please submit one if you're not gonna be in the area in June or on that date. That's a way that you can vote early um, and make sure that your voice is heard. But, and polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Aliyah, Margot. Himajet, it was really nice to spend some time with you learning more about what's going on in Acton. Thank you so much, Jesse, for being such an amazing host. And thank you, Aliyah and Margo, for sharing this space with me. Thank you, Himajet, for uh, stepping, stepping up, for stepping up and, you know, running for office and trying to make a difference. You're here. <laughs>